Solange Mujan joins me on the set now to take a look at what the press has been saying today. Hi, Solange. Hi, Jeannie. You're going to start with a look at the Greek press, a major anti-austerity protests in Greece today. Uh, and the Greek press is also reacting to political upheaval in Italy. It is indeed. Let's start by taking a look at the, the front pages of the Greek, Greek press this morning. Let's start with the center-right Catamarini. It says there is fever in Italy, but also in Brussels and in Athens. Tania, which is a center-left daily in Greece, says basically the same thing, that there's, quote, an earthquake in Rome, but Athens is shaking, too. Now, uh, with Greece, Greece's stock market taking a hit. But the headline is actually really referring to borrowing costs. If they go up, then that means that Athens is going to have a hard time this summer uh, 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 re-entering the debt market, which is planned later for later this summer. Now, if you want to find more about find out more about this, head to The Economist. They have an article entitled Rebuilding the Ruins. It's about how Greek banks are going to have to reduce their bad loans in what The Economist says is a new phase for the country. Let's look now at Asia, where the American and the Korean press are all wondering if there really will be this upcoming summit on North Korea in the coming weeks. Yeah, let's start off with the cartoons, because they're really quite vivid this morning. The The, the Week says, uh, the American magazine, The Week says that Donald Trump has it has an image, there it is, of Kim Jong-un being pulled by Donald Trump, and he's saying, stop, go, slow down, go faster. Uh, now, the Coolia Internationale has also has another cartoon. Um, that shows that the summit may be looking up, uh, even though it has been a topsy-turvy road. They say that uh, the, the summit has been a crash course with lots of winding turns. Uh, now, in a more on a more serious note, the Washington Post asks in an editorial if the quote zigzag uh, zigzag road will actually work. Uh, they wonder whether negotiators are on the road or in a ditch. Uh, the paper says that the volatility is a sign of an inexperienced American delegation. Um, but that so much momentum has been created that the summit may actually happen. I like that first cartoon of Donald Trump chasing, I believe it was the Nobel Prize. Yeah. <laughs> it like. All right, let's turn now to Russia and the murder yesterday of a very famous journalist, Arkady Babchenko. Yeah, the slain journalist was killed in Kiev. He was shot in the back uh, as he was going home. Now, the Kiev paper, Kiev Post, tells us about this tragedy um, and about the journalist. He was a famed and lauded journalist who was highly critical of Vladimir Putin because and because because of his coverage of the Kremlin and death threats, he fled to Ukraine last year. Now, Medusa, which is a Lithuanian-based site, pays homage to him in an article entitled A Man Made by War. He was a former soldier who became disgusted by conflicts and by the conflicts in Chechnya that he turned to journalism. Novia Gazeta, which is the Russian opposition paper, uh, which has had six of its journalists killed since 2000, called Babchenko, quote, an absolutely honest man, for whom the words of everyday people was of the utmost importance. So that's some, quite some sad news for journalism right there. All right, we're going to focus now on the environment and recycling. You found a couple of articles about waste and how it's being treated in different countries. Yeah, I want to bring your attention to a couple of articles that show how waste is interconnected in the world. Let's start with Africa. Well, the Washington Post tells us that Rwanda and some other African nations uh, no longer want the cast-off used clothing that Americans and Europeans and other Western nations donate and then are th or throw away that are then shipped to Africa. Used clothing is a huge industry in, in much of Africa, um, but Rwanda's president, Paul Kagame, wants to focus more on developing their manufacturing se sector and creating a domestic clothing industry. And this is actually creating a trade dispute with the U.S., um, one that could actually cr benefit China, for China has opened a factory in Rwanda, and they are also boosting their exports to the country. Now, China is also present in another article about waste today. Uh, this one is from The New York Times. It covers how recently many recycled products in U.S. cities, once they've been recycled by consumers, consumers are actually going into landfills. Why is that? Well, because they're no longer being shipped to China. Um, Beijing has decided it no longer wants to take in as much foreign recyclable waste, uh, which means that American trash companies have no place to put it. Um, so this issue, The Times says, is also affecting European cities as well. Hmm. That's a fascinating subject. All right, let's go back uh, to the United States, uh, where there is really a huge story there today. The American media is all abuzz about 
ABC, a U.S. channel's decision to cancel one of the hottest TV shows of the season after the show's lead actress tweeted racist comments. Yeah, this is actually all a buzz in the U.S. As you said, it's pretty much everywhere. Um, it, the sh it, to give you the backstory, the show is called Roseanne, and it was a big, a big show in the 1990s. It came back on the air earlier this year, um, at, and, and it became ABC's number one primetime show. But ABC has now canceled it because its star, Roseanne Barr, has tweeted a racist comment. Um, the New York Times uh, takes up on the story and said and praises the move by ABC in an editorial saying that even if the network is likely to lose tens of millions of expected ad revenue, they the network is saying with the move that words matter, that there is a line that can't be crossed and that bigotry is one of them. Solange, now just to wrap up, you found something that might just indicate what the next foodie craze might be. I'm intrigued. Yeah, after gluten-free food, the New York Post tells us that cockroach milk, you heard me correctly, <laughs> cockroach milk uh, could be the next thing, uh, next new big thing. Uh, the Post tells us that multiple companies have actually started to invest in cockroach farms to get the milk, which actually comes from a very specific Hawaiian cockroach. Not all cockroaches produce milk. Um, well, why, beyond the icky factor uh, could cockroach milk become hip? Well, it's actually incredibly nutritious. Studies have shown even more nutritious, more nutritious than cow's milk. Uh, so it could be the ice cream of the future. I'm just thinking of all the cockroaches it would take to make one ice cream. <laughs> that is a good Ooh. point. Solange, thank you for that look at the press today. And thanks to you for watching France 24. You can get a closer look, of course, at all of our press reviews on our website. The address is France24.com.